Good day everyone and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. Um, again, a late video, I'm sorry again uh, until March 15. I'm kind of a really, really busy schedule, so I'm a little late posting videos on YouTube. But anyway, I'm back with another video. Uh, this one is going to be a two parts video. Uh, just because today I'm going to build and test this circuit and tomorrow we're going to test the practical side of the circuit, see if it works. Um, this is the simple um, PTT02 CW transmitter. Uh, you can find it on PCB way. Um, you can order the PCB boards uh, and build it. It has about 700 milliwatts and I presented this one in an older article. Um, I like it very much. And uh, similar to that one is this uh, CW transmitter. Uh, both of them are with just one transistor at 2222A or um, 23904. But, uh, and both of them are around 700 milliwatts. But the only disadvantage is that they are having a fixed frequency. And uh, the idea for me is that later on at some point after I'm going to have the time to learn the Morse code I really really want to do that and uh, I'm going to take them out and do some solar activations uh, using this uh, simple circuit. But the disadvantage is that I'm stuck on one frequency so they are not frequency agile and I'm, uh, I'm stuck to the frequency of the crystal. So um, of course uh, if you're following uh, Peter Parker you know that you can uh, put in uh, parallel with the um, a crystal you can put an inductor and then sorry in series um, you can put an inductor and then after the inductor you put a variable capacitor and the variable capacitor is connected to ground instead of the crystal and then you can change the frequency a little bit but I always wondered what if I could use a simple VFO circuit and uh, replace the crystal with a VFO and uh, this way I can use the same VFO for a bunch of uh, simple circuits. Uh, so I'm able to um, have a little bit of uh, frequency agility when um, going out uh, doing solar activations. If you want to build beautiful homebrew projects, choose PCB Way. With excellent PCB prototyping services, all you have to do is to open your account on PCB Way, use the software of your choice to design your PCB board, upload the Gerber files and place your order. Soon you will receive your professional and great quality PCB boards for your projects. PCB Way also offers PCB assembly services, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing and even more. PCB Way is the way. So uh, anyway, right now I'm just going to start putting the whole thing together. I still have to search for a couple of capacitors and whatever, a couple of more components. Um, I have most of them over here on the table. But again, I'm going to build it Manhattan style and uh, we'll see if it works. Okay, so I'm done. I finished building this one. Um, initially, I built a different version. I'm going to put the schematic on the screen right now. And unfortunately for me, it didn't oscillate. I spent about uh, two afternoons uh, trying to figure it out and why it doesn't work, why it doesn't want to oscillate. I just couldn't get it to work. And uh, I found about four or five other um, similar designs online, similar schematics. Basically, it was the same schematic with just little modifications or uh, uh, different component values. I tried the other ones too and none of them work either. Uh, but finally, uh, I'm going to put again the schematic on the screen. I found this schematic and this one seems to work really nice because I did the modifications to the one that I already had built uh, according to this schematic. And uh, as soon as I powered the VFO, it started oscillating right away and it works fine. And I'm really happy about it. Um, I'm going to test it in a little bit and I'm going to show you how I'm testing a VFO with not much measurement equipment because, you know, I don't have much. Um, there's no oscilloscope or whatever, uh, signal tracer, <laughs> whatever is necessary to uh, get uh, the signal generated by the VFO on a screen so you get to see the, the sine wave. And uh, yeah, let's uh, test it really quick and see how it works but I'm glad it works. 
and uh, in the next video what we're going to, to do is to try to use the VFO in the simple uh, minimalist CBW transmitter to replace the crystal will it work I have no idea uh, I didn't get to test it yet I removed the crystal and I prepared everything for that but uh, I spent a lot of time trying to get this one to work so okay so the first option for me to to see if it actually works uh, and it oscillates properly and also to check the frequency uh, where the the VFO um, it's working it's using a simple uh, frequency counter and I connected this one to this pickup coil I have about I'm not sure four or five turns something like that and I just place it on top of the coil over here and uh, it's showing me the frequency that I have right now now of course I'm touching the whole thing and the frequency it's jumping around like crazy but um, to be honest it's pretty stable uh, considering the components that I used <laughs> very very cheap capacitors really bad ones um, I think in the older videos I told you I purchased a really bad batch of capacitors um, they were cheap and I thought uh, you know maybe it's a good deal but it wasn't because uh, it's written on them they are 82 picofarads and uh, in reality if you measure them they are somewhere around 120 130 now I know the capacitors have a, a tolerance in value but not that big <laughs> so definitely uh, I'm not buying cheap capacitors anymore but for testing purposes like now uh, they're okay because you get to throw them away after you use them a lot and uh, they start to, um, <laughs> to fall apart so uh, frequency counter is one of the methods that I'm using to see that the VFO is actually working uh, and I also get to see the frequency now the one that I have here let's see uh, I can tune between 7.2 megahertz and it goes down all the way to 6.7 something megahertz now of course I'm going to uh, later on when I'm going to build the final version I know that I only want to cover the 200 hertz um, of the 40 meters band and I will adjust that uh, from the value of the variable capacitor or maybe I'm going to use a diode tuning we'll see um, and also the whole LC tank you know I'm going to recalculate the coil uh, trying to get the coil to um, a lower inductance because the lower the inductance uh, and the higher the capacity uh, the more stable is the VFO so that's what I'm going to try to do in the final version now okay let's do the second test uh, again in the older video I made the squeaky uh, a nice tool that you can use and I'm going to put the antenna up and uh, I'm going to put it apart a little bit so okay I have the LED lights over here as well so as soon as I'm going to come closer with the antenna but yeah now I because of the LED lights I have to be careful with the setting on the sensitivity but if I come closer to the VFO because it's generating RF on a very little power the, the squeaky will actually detect that so I know that it works even though I would not have uh, in case I, would, I wouldn't have um, a frequency counter so the squeaky is actually a good tool and it's good to have around you can test a lot of things and of course the third option and the more obvious one is to actually use a receiver uh, for example I um, in, the idea is that you should know already about uh, what frequency your VFO is generating so you know exactly where to search <laughs> on the dial on your receiver uh, I'm going to put that video at the end just because I'm going to have to switch lights uh, the LED lights that I have right now is, are creating a really really ugly noise in the receiver and you wouldn't be able to hear the, the VFO properly so yeah 
it works it's fantastic and i really like it and i'm happy the first vfo project that i'm building of course uh, this is again just a test it's not the final version uh, keep keep that in mind um, i'm just testing this one uh, probably i'm going to modify the schematic uh, to have temperature compensation and i'm going to use uh, better quality um, components uh, to get it as stable as possible and uh, then once i'm happy i will publish the final schematic of the vfo that i'm using after we're going to do the tests because we might have to do modifications to the circuit uh, if it doesn't work this way and uh, once i'm happy with the final version um, then i will draw the final schematic and i'm going to post it on the blog just in case you want to have a closer look a very ugly construction manhattan style but i <laughs> use this uh, as a test board i'm really curious if it's going to work as a crystal replacement in uh, simple transmitters and transceivers um, probably tomorrow we're going to talk about more details on this because i, I was asked many many times uh, by beginners like me in the past if they can replace a crystal in a transmitter because they, they didn't have the crystal on the frequency that uh, the transmitter was built for and uh, they wanted to use that but they didn't have the crystal so they asked me if they can build uh, an lc tank you know like a variable capacitor a band spread capacitor which comes in parallel with the with a variable capacitor and an inductor and this circuit will replace the um, the crystal and of course that doesn't work i tried long time ago and i know for sure that it doesn't work um, but i was told hey be a, build a vfo with two transistors and that will work and i i somebody sent me a schematic with um, simple vfo with two transistors but they were like uh, npn transistors a 212222 um, i built this one using jfeds just because i know that it's a little bit better it's more stable um, it's not so sensitive to temperature changes and that's the reason why i decided to build this one uh, but i never tried building a vfo before so i don't know if you can replace a crystal with this circuit for example um, and the reason i wanted to actually build a vfo is just because i get that question very very often can i replace a crystal with a vfo and the obvious answer would be yes but uh, what schematic to use because uh, that's the next question that i get asked <laughs> and uh, yeah it's nice to be able to give answer to people but I don't like giving um, answers that I don't know about. Uh, you know, like uh, I would say, hey, you could use this schematic after I search online and I find something that I think it might work, but in reality it might not work. And I just make uh, somebody waste their time um, with something. So instead of giving a bad answer, I better keep my mouth shut, do a test like now, and then I know exactly what to tell. <laughs> um so yeah that's the whole idea in building all these circuits and playing around so anyway um after the tomorrow test uh, we're going to test it together with the transmitter if everything works nicely i'm also designing if you remember in the uh, older video i uh, built the um, um, how do you call it the keyer uh, the cw keyer uh, with the tran one transistor and um, that one is also still in tests but once i'm happy with both of these projects i'm going to design a pcb board that it will be available for you to order from my friends at pcbway so anyway enough talking for today um, i'm going to uh, leave you and let you listen to the vfo on the um, my yaetsu frg7 receiver okay so the final test again um, it's using a receiver to receive the vfo uh, having the vfo close by uh, next to the receiver and uh, since it's generating a little rf you get to pick it up on your receiver on the frequency that you build the vfo uh, for that if you know the frequency now of course uh, this vfo again is not very stable you can hear the frequency drift it's drifting up, it's drifting down, but somehow it's 
it's staying in the in the same frequency i had this on for the entire day and probably since eight o'clock this morning when i got it to work no i'm lying 10 o'clock 10 30 something like that until late in the afternoon about 5 p.m it drifted about uh, 10 15 hertz something like that and considering the very cheap capacitors and bad uh, very cheap components actually that i used um I'm quite impressed. It's not a it's not a bad VFO. <laughs> so anyway, uh, probably the final version. I hope it's going to be a lot better, and it will have even less drift. If I'm lucky, if not, uh, I'm going to have to make a adjustment. But anyway, the third version to check if your VFO is working is using a receiver. And I will see you in the next video to test this one together with the transmitter until then thank you for watching and 73